Welcome to Gene Annotation. Uh, he, I'm going to get you started in this little module video, and this is here for those of you that couldn't make the meeting, but it's also here if you ever find yourself stuck getting started when you're working on your own, because the beauty of this project is you need me uh, to give you a brief intro, but you do not need me to be sitting next to you all the time. So the way the course will be set up, first of all, there's a training manual. And they did an awesome job of doing screenshots of exactly what you should see. Second thing that you should know is yes, there is a practice bacteria genome in there, a specific gene that we will all do together or that you can follow me doing or the manual doing to know that you have your feet under you before you look at your Clostridium botulinum bacteria. So we are gonna be starting with a bacteria called Chytococcus sedentarius and we're gonna take a gene from that and go through it. It's pretty well known as a practice. Then you will be looking at your clostridium gene, which, just to remind you, you will be the first pair of eyes that kinda of goes through this process with that gene. First of all, this is what the manual looks like, Geniac Training Manual. This is the first place you go if you ever feel like you're getting stuck and where it's located is here. So you go to the HFL website. If you don't know how to log into your school email, that's fine. Go to the HFL website, it will tell you how to do it. But once you are here, you log in, it's whatever your current password is, and sign in. I have mine set. My Office 365 is set to go to my OneDrive first. Yours may go to any other screen because in the settings up here, the gear, you can make it go to any place you want here. So if you're not in the right spot, I don't wanna be in my OneDrive, okay? Where you'll go is you'll click this waffle and you'll go to people and your screen might look a little bit different than mine because I'm in some groups with people that you may not be involved with. But over on the left side, you'll see groups and UB Bioinformatics Experimental Group is right here so you'll click us and you'll get to our resources page so what this gives us is first of all a place where it lists only those of us who are in this group so it's just us it's our own special place and on here i have a calendar for us that will list when our next meetings are so you can see there's two things right there it also has a file section so how do you get this training manual that is so important and makes your job so easy well, first of all, you could save it, but once you're in the files, you'll see that I have it here already, training manual by chapter, and when you click it, it'll open up another tab in your browser, so make sure pop-ups aren't blocked or anything like that, and here it is, okay? So you would, whatever chapter you need, I will print these for those of you that like to touch it. There are only like 12 of us, so that is kind of a nice thing. This thing is nice because it walks you through a whole bunch of stuff. There's a nice table of contents. It is in color, even though I will print in black and white. So it starts, I am not going to go through and lecture you on this. This is more basic biology, so I'm gonna highlight some things from the background information section, and then we're gonna move on together to annotate our first uh, practice gene. So it goes through DNA structure, five prime and three prime and uh, nucleotides and nitrogenous bases. So you wanna read this sometime, especially if this is a little rusty for you or you haven't gotten to it this year in class yet. So I'm gonna scroll past and I'm at number five in your manual. Okay, one thing right away that you'll need to know is we'll be figuring out in our first module if it's the plus or minus strand. So there's some tips here for what that looks like. In the actual gene notebook, it's quite easy. So I'm gonna scroll on. There's a section that talks next about prokary prokaryotic gene structure. Clostridium botulinum is a bacteria. So they have a lot simpler gene structure than we do. They don't have a lot of junk DNA compared to us. So one thing that this picture shows you is that the gene for your clostridium uh, could be on the top strand or it could be on the bottom strand. There can be genes in either one. So one of our jobs right away, it's very easy, will be to figure out which is which. Scrolling on. Uh, this is what will happen in the process of transcribing that gene, RNA polymerase, this RNAP, a messenger RNA that's gonna to go to a ribosome and make your protein. And your job in this whole thing is to figure out what does this gene that the computer thinks is a gene do for that bacteria? 
So that's the process of annotation. That's what you're going to be doing. I skipped away to the end to find this, but remember that what your the computer has done for you is it has gone through a whole sequence of the whole genome for Clostridium botulinum, and it has then called the gene. That's right here. All it does is it's programmed to identify what it think might be a gene, and it numbers it. And as it says here, the computer can be completely wrong, or it can call something a gene that isn't there. Or it can miss a gene that really is there because it got confused and picked something else nearby. It also does do a, a basic function pr uh, prediction, but it's not always right. So our annotation can prove the computer wrong, and it's not necessarily rare. You don't have to think that you're just doing work that a computer already did. Computers are not really sophisticated enough, even today, to do this part very well. So as it says at the end, the human brain has unique properties that lets us see connections that a computer can't be programmed to connect yet until somebody smart enough to write the program comes along. Um, as an illustration, as we sign off to this basic info, uh, you can see they did an example towards the end for Listeria, for Listeria monocytogenes, which is a bacteria uh, that can make us sick. So it's clinically significant. He just entered it into this website and he pulls up, he pulls up some genome information. And as you can see, this bacteria Listeria, not our bacteria, but Listeria has they think 3,161 genes. That's what the computer thinks. But proteins that actually have a function where the computer's predicted a function, there's only 733, which leaves a whole chunk of genes that we don't know what they do or what they control or what uh, their purpose is. That's the whole point of this project. So again, we'll do it with a sample when we're together and then whether you stay to do it with your actual real life Clostridium gene or not, will be up to you. So we're gonna get started in the next module with Geniact. Good luck, we're gonna have fun.